Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover setting up your system for this course. In this video series, I am going to be covering the Linux command line where you directly interface with the operating system. By using the command line, you can view and modify files, you can access and control hardware, you can manipulate disk and partitions, you can view and control system preferences, you can archive, backup, or copy files, you can control network, and more. The best thing about this series is that I'm going to focus on using only free tools so that anyone can learn how to use Linux. In order to minimize the possibility of damage to a real system while learning, I highly recommend that you either run Linux in a virtual machine or boot your system via a live USB. Let's look at the virtual machine method. A virtual machine is basically a machine within the machine. It allows your physical machine to carve out some resources such as CPUs and memory and to create a separate virtual machine. In our learning environment, the benefit of booting to a virtual machine is that you don't have to be afraid of testing out commands which may be detrimental to your real system. If anything goes wrong, you can just reboot your virtual machine to a save session and start again. Step 1. We need to download a Linux distro ISO. Distro is short for distribution and it's basically the flavor of Linux that you are running. There are many flavors of Linux and each customized towards a specific usage. And then an ISO, ISO, is just a file that encompasses everything you need to create the operating system. The distro that we are going to use is called Kane, Computer Aided Investigative Environment. And it's basically catered towards computer forensics. So let's go ahead and go to the Kane website at kanelive.net. And then from there, you go to the download section. From here, we can see that the ISO is about four gigs in size. So make sure you have the proper storage space for it on whatever media you download it to. Kane version 11.0 is the most up-to-date version as of the, this recording. Step two is that we need to download a virtual machine tool. This is going to allow us to build a virtual machine based on the ISO that we just downloaded. There are a few free software packages out there. The one I prefer is VirtualBox and it's available at virtualbox.org. After you download VirtualBox and install it, we can now move on to the next step. Step three, we're gonna run VirtualBox to create a new virtual machine. The first thing you do is you hit the new virtual machine icon. It will ask you for a name and we can just put in learning Linux. Next step is that we're gonna put it into a folder. So give it wherever you want to put it. For type, we're gonna pick Linux because we're gonna be running a Linux virtual machine. And then for the version, if you know the specific version that you are using, whether it's a Fedora 64-bit or Oracle 32-bit or Red Hat or whatever it is, go ahead and pick that. We're going to pick the generic 64-bit version. Memory size, by default, looks like it gives you just one gig of memory and you probably want to go at least two gigs, if not more. If your system has plenty of memory, then you know make it up to four gigs or whatnot, depending on your usage. If you have more to spare, then obviously the more memory the better, but for what we're going to be doing, 2 gigs is sufficient. Next thing you want to do is select a drive type. So we want to create a hard disk, right? So this is going to be, allow your uh, virtual machine to have some storage. Next, it, it's going to ask you for the file location. Once again, we pick the location where you want to store that hard disk file. And for the size, I think 20 gigs is probably good for our testing purposes. Next, it's going to ask you what kind of hard disk file type you want to use. 
And for our purpose, because we're using VirtualBox, let's go ahead and leave it at VDI, which is the VirtualBox disk image. If you want to use it with uh, another virtual machine, for example, on Windows, you can use a VHD format. Or if you want to use VMware, then you can use the VMDK format. Next is going to show how you want to allocate the physical drive. I'm going to select dynamically allocated. So what this means is that when the file doesn't actually need all 20 gigs, the system won't actually allocate all 20 gigs. It is only going to allocate uh, whatever you need at that time. All right, so once you are done there, go ahead and hit the create button and then it is going to create a uh, virtual machine. So now that we've created our virtual machine, let's go ahead and click on the settings icon so we can take a look at the settings. First icon is the general icon. And then within that, the first tab is basic. Here you can look at the name, which we've called learning Linux. And then for the type, we set it to Linux. And then for version, again, we've already picked these. Next is the advanced tab. And here you can take snapshots uh, and then you can also share the clipboard and drag and drop. And you can also put a lengthy description uh, in the next tab there of what the machine is if you like. And the last tab in the general section is uh, for disk encryption where you can encrypt the drive that we've created. And for now, we're not going to bother with any of that. Next thing we are going to look at is the system uh, section. And under the system section for the first tab, you have the motherboard. And here you can set the memory, which we've already set to two gigs. Next, you can set the boot order and you can tell it to boot from a, a virtual floppy, a virtual optical disk or the virtual hard drive and so forth. At this point, I would say just leave these as the default. The next tab is a processor and by default they only use one CPU and I would suggest that you bump it up to at least two and if you have more CPUs in your system to spare then again obviously the more the better. Then for acceleration we'll just leave these as is. Next we're going to look at the storage icon and here you get to take a look at a couple of different controllers what you want to do is go ahead and click on the uh, IDE controller where it says empty CD, right? We want to click on that and choose a disk. And we're going to look for that ISO file that we have downloaded from the internet. So for us, we're going to select the Kane 11 ISO. And then we're also going to click on the live CD slash DVD because this particular ISO is a live CD slash DVD. And then let's go ahead and hit OK. And we are done looking at settings. Step four, we are now going to boot our virtual machine and off we go. So when Kane boots up in the virtual machine, it is going to give you this boot menu where you can select different options. Usually the best thing to do is to take the default option, which is to start Kane Live. So let's go ahead and use the arrow keys to select it and then just hit enter. One thing to note is that if you don't take any action within the first 10 seconds, it will default to the first option. So this is what Linux looks like when it's booting. And uh, again, every distro will be slightly different. But for the most part, you're going to see a lot of messages that look like gibberish nonsense to you. And as you get used to it, they will make more and more sense. This is what Kane looks like once the boot is completed. Right? It's going to be in a nice GUI environment. And what we're going to do is to start a terminal window by going down to this icon over here and then double clicking on it and it will give us our terminal screen. Let's look at the live USB boot method. A live USB boot is a USB flash drive that contains a full operating system and can be booted. Essentially, your computer is now running the operating system from that thumb drive instead of from the internal hard drive. 
In our learning environment, the benefit of booting from the live USB is that you don't have to be afraid of testing out commands which may be detrimental to your real system. If anything goes wrong, you can just reboot to the live USB and start again. Step 1 of this live USB boot method. We will need to download a Linux distro ISO. This will be the same procedure as what we did earlier with the virtual machine section, so please refer to that part of this video. Step 2. You need to download a live USB creation tool. One free tool is called Rufus, and their website is at rufus.ie. After getting on the Rufus website, you can go ahead and download the version you're interested in. Step 3. Let's go ahead and use Rufus to burn the ISO to make a bootable thumb drive. So let's go ahead and launch Rufus. The first thing we are going to do is to select a thumb drive that you have plugged into the machine. Next, we are going to select the ISO that we downloaded. So in this case, it's going to be the Kane 11 ISO. And then you can go ahead and select the partitioning schemes and the targets and so forth. But in this case, I'm just going to leave those as the default. And then when you're ready, just go ahead and hit start. When Rufus is done creating your bootable thumb drive, you will see ready in the green bar. Step 4. Boot your machine to the thumb drive. On a Mac, what you do is plug in the thumb drive when the machine is off. Hold down the Alt Option key and then hit Power. What you should see is a graphical menu showing you the bootable devices that your system sees. Choose the Linux distro that's on your thumb drive using the arrow keys and then hit Enter. On a PC, what you do is plug in a thumb drive when the machine is off. Power on the machine and hold down the boot menu key. This will be different depending on the brand of computer you have. On a Dell, it is the F12 key. On an HP, it is usually the escape key. Once you get into the boot menu, select the USB with your Linux distro using the arrow keys and then hit return. Now that you have booted to the Linux virtual machine or to Linux with the live USB, you can launch the terminal window by clicking on the terminal application icon. And once the terminal window comes up, we are ready to begin typing into the command line. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this video where we looked at creating a virtual machine and also creating a live boot USB stick. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.